In this video, we're going to be talking about how to form plurals of nouns in Spanish. En este video, hablaremos de cómo formar los plurales de los nombres en español. So as I've expressed in the previous videos, um, every noun in the Spanish language is either masculine or feminine. So it's either an, an el or a la. Um, and if we want to make, if we want to transform the word into its plural form, we don't only transform the word itself, but we also have to transform these components of the sentence. So if we have something that is masculine and we want to say that there's more of it, el becomes los and la becomes las. So if I were to take an example, I could say, um, for example, one book in Spanish would be el libro, but more books would be los libros. So I'll just write it down, los libros. Um, for a feminine word, let's use the word tía, which means an aunt. So la tía, las tías, if I have more of them. So las tías. And you've probably noticed that if I was, when I was expressing the plural forms of the certain nouns, I not only changed this, but I only, but I also changed the word itself. And the way I changed it is that I added an S to the end of this. So the singular form would be libro. The plural is libros. Same goes for this, tía, but tías for the plural. And so this is reminiscent of the English language because in the English language, you probably know that you form plurals by adding either an S or an ES to the end of the certain word. Um, and in Spanish, this is also the case. In many, many Spanish words, this is how you form plurals. And this is the two cases that I have listed right here. Uh, but there are three other cases that you can meet or three other groups of words that form their plurals differently. So in this video, I'd like to cover all five of them. Um, and that's probably, you know, everything that you have to know about plurals. So this will be a quite a you know, comprehensive video that you will probably get to use throughout your entire Spanish studies. So let's get to the first group, which I already expressed in um, the two previous examples with the libro and tía. So these are words that end with a vowel. And if you have a word ending with a vowel and you want to make a plural form of it, you just add s to the end. So, oh, sorry, I want to write, okay, plus s. So I already showed you two examples, but I can show you one more. Uh, for example, uh, la mano. La mano. The plural form becomes las manos. So I, of course, change la for las, or if it was a masculine word, I would change el for los. And I also add the s after the vowel. By the way, this is one of the words that we discussed in the previous videos about gender peculiarities, because even though it ends with an o, it is a feminine word. So if you want to have a quick review of that, you feel free to uh, go a few steps back. Yeah, so this was the first case. Uh, this is probably the most frequent one. If you have, so if you have a word ending with a vowel and you want to create um, the plural of it, you add an S to the end. However, you can also have a word that ends either with an accented vowel or a consonant. And in that case, you add ES to the end. For example, a word ending with an accented vowel would be ruby, el ruby, which means ruby, el ruby, and to make a plural out of that, you would say los rubíes, los rubíes. And to demonstrate a word with the consonant, for example, um, el papel, which means paper, el papel, for the plural los papeles. So again, I just add the suffix es at the end. Oops, sorry, los papeles. Okay, another group of words that you can encounter is, or are words that end with a vowel and then are followed by an s. Like, for example, the word um, lunes, el lunes, which means Monday. In these cases, you don't change, you don't do anything. So the word stays the same even in its plural form. The only thing you change is el for los or la for las. So el lunes becomes los lunes. However, you can have a word that ends with an accented vowel and then is followed by an S and that is a completely different case. For example, with the word interés, 
el interés, which has uh, more meanings. Oops, sorry, this is an S. Which has more meanings. It can either mean interest in the way, you know, I am interested in, you know, reading Spanish books, for example. But it can also mean interest as in terms of money. So, like, based upon this interest rate, I gained an interest of blah, blah, blah. So it has both of the, it has both of these meanings even in Spanish, and the way we form plural for these kinds of words that have an accented vowel and an s at the end is that we add es. So los intereses. Um, so plus es again. And you may have noticed an interesting thing that happened here is that with the plural form. I do not write the accent, I do not write the tilde above the E anymore. And uh, just for the sake of making this video complete, I'll maybe jump a few steps back um, back to the video when we explained accents, uh, and I'll show you the reason for why we have an accent in the singular form and not in the plural form. So let's look at the plural word and let's divide it into syllables. So in the re ses. Now, obviously, this is a word since it doesn't have any tildes, it doesn't have any accents. This is obviously a word that follows the general rules of accentuation, which says that if a word ends with an, a vowel, an n or an s, we stress the next to last syllable. And this word obviously ends with an s, so the syllable that we stress is this one. So here, the natural accent lies where it's supposed to lie, intereses. That is, you know, the natural way that it's supposed to sound in Spanish. However, in this case, if it didn't have this tilde right here, the natural way that we would read it, if it followed the natural rules, would be... Okay, so let's divide it into syllables again. In, te, res. Again, since it ends with an S, we would stress the next to last syllable, which would be this one. And let me show you how that would sound. Interes. You know, that doesn't quite sound right, and it also doesn't make much sense for the singular uh, form of the word to have a different accent um, than the plural form of the word. So this is what you might be seeing sometimes, that you, for the plural, you either remove or add the accent in order to retain the natural accent of the word. Um, yeah, so that was it. That was just a, a quick recap of some of the previous video. If you're not entirely sure how I did this, then again, feel free to go back and watch it again. But let's get back to the plurals. Uh, I have one last group prepared for you, and this is a group of words that end with that ends with a Z. For example, the word um, lapis, el lapis, which means a uh, pencil, el lapis. And what we do here is that we change the Z for, an, for a C, and we add ES. So el lapiz, but more pencils would be los lapices, los lapices. So Z becomes C, and we add ES. That is a general guideline for any words that end with a Z, if you want to make a plural out of them. Okay, so this was it. Um, these were the five cases or five groups of words that you can meet and five different ways of forming plurals. And I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you at the next video, uh, which will also be about plurals, but I'd like to show you some, some practice. So putting all of these things into practice is showing you um, some more words and how to create plurals.